Hello and welcome to my stream. My name is Kat and I do art and today we're going to be working on some uh, open projects that I've started these past couple of weeks. So yeah, welcome, welcome. I am happy to have you all here with me this morning. So yesterday we worked on Kirby and Rick, which was a lot of fun. So today I am going to continue working on both Kirby and Rick, and then hopefully if we get far enough along, maybe I will get to my coyote painting that I've been working on uh, this past month, So, which is exciting. Hope you're all having a good day today. I am excited to do Kirby. Kirby is so much fun. It's very, it's a lovely game. It's very relaxing. Um, I'm thinking about having Kirby be, uh, Kirby All-Stars being my next video game that I play for myself. Um, so I'm looking forward to enjoying the Kirby series, maybe working my way through some of them as well. So with this Kirby, I really wanted to incorporate some of my favorite Kirby designs. Uh, it's a lot of pink, but it's Kirby, so it's, it's got to have lots and lots of pink. So what I'm doing here now is that since I went ahead and painted the base colors for everything, I'm going to go through and erase all the pencil lines that I can find. You can tell my eraser is very well loved and very gross looking but we just don't think about it. The eraser that I'm using here today is a Moo eraser. Yes, it's exactly the way it sounds. It's M-O-O. -O. Moo erasers are wonderful. I really wish I had them in college. So I was really surprised at how great they work. Um, and they come in a nice package, but this is how far and how gross, because it travels around in my um, traveling bag, which I've got back here. So it kind of gets a little dirty from traveling around with my pencils. And then of course over here we've got Rick, which is the cute little hamster that Kirby can ride. I like the design of Rick, um, and I really love the animations of like Kirby and Rick together. They're very, very cute. Um, I love all the iterations that they've done throughout the games. Because you can roll them, you can um, ride them. It's so cute. I've watched a lot of Let's Plays of uh, Kirby games because they are darling um, games and they're so much fun and they're very well loved. There's a reason why they're loved. So what we're going to focus on is uh, these colors are lovely but they're very flat. So what I want to do is add some shading add some more, maybe even some more saturation to them to really make them pop. I'm very happy with my Kirby color, but definitely needs some shading to kind of give them a little realism going on there, a little more happiness, a little more pep. Um, Rick could actually use more orange. I need more orange for my Rick. He needs, he needs a little more color to his fur. Uh, the flowers I think are really pretty. Debating whether or not to add leaves, but we'll see where we get once we add color to Rick because he is the star I want to make sure that this is just a really pretty border to make a really cool sticker Because this is what the ideas for this was I did um, flaming Leo burning Leo not flaming burning Leo um, I did it in completely unique color did it as blue which was exciting and I had this really beautiful like feather flame border all the way around it and I love the idea so much that I was like I really want a set of three. I don't know if I'll make them all into stickers but I'll at least make one of them into stickers and then have them where you can have all three of them together and make a set. Because I think for me I'm like that would be that would be a really cute uh, a fun way like I'm thinking like in your hallway or perhaps maybe like in a bathroom or like a kid's room having like these little cute illustrations so <clears throat> speaking of cute illustrations why don't we go ahead and start with um, Rick because he's furthest away from me I'm right-handed I I constantly put my hands in my watercolor so I have to be careful 
about smearing watercolor, so always try to start as far away as possible and then move over. So that's what we're gonna do. The orange that we made yesterday um, was a combination of yellow ochre and scarlet. It makes this lovely um, orange color that feels natural. It doesn't feel... Um, oranges are tricky because oranges are like super saturated. They've got a lot of color to them. So it's hard to make an orange that feels like you might see it in real life. Because I have a cat who's orange. His name's Newton. He's totally passed out. You can barely see my little chair over here. He is orange. Except painting him is so hard to paint because it's hard to replicate that color of orange. Um, it's easy to make like like bright, uh, bright, bright orange, but it's very hard to make natural orange. My husband has a car that is like, I'm not kidding you, very orange. It's like um, the orange traffic barrel orange. Like, caution, I am here. That color of orange is fun to make. It's very easy to make. It's very hard to make natural looking orange. So I know you can kind of see me making a puddle. I made a puddle yesterday. So I do have the red tones in here. I might add just a little more of the yellow to it, mix it around, then I'll wash out my brush. So that way I don't have since this is going to be a wash over my original, I want to make sure that I don't lift up my color underneath. So I have to be really careful about making sure that my brush isn't too saturated with water and that I'm not loading up so much color in my brush that I'll like run out or make a big blot. So I've got a little rag with me. I use rags. These soft microfiber rags are wonderful for this purpose. Plus you can wash them over and over again. I used to use paper towels, but I'm trying really hard to be earth friendly because my my work is not inherently earth friendly, but I am trying to be a little more cautious about the products I use and where they get their products from. Try to stay, you know, products that are made here in the US, which is very hard. So, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move him like this. So that way I can easily see him and interact with him. So we're just going to add. And you can already tell that I've already put in some shading from yesterday, which is just fine because I'm going to add to that shading as well. I will probably have to let him sit and dry first but as you can tell just putting that one wash down has really you can still see the underlaying but you can really start to tell that the color is starting to really increase it's, it's a lot this is a lot different from this and even though the color is wet which means that it's going to dry a couple shades lighter than what it is here it's still going to be a quite a significant difference between here and here which is great which is what i want i want it to feel um, I wanted to feel saturated. I wanted to have that feeling of this is something that you want to pick up, that you want to squish and cuddle. Doing research for this, I found a lot of images of Rick as a plush, and oh my gosh, what a cute plush. I would be very tempted. Hello! Ginger, it's nice that you're here. I need to make a few quick phone calls and then I'll try to talk instead of lurk. Lurking is just fine, Ginger. Never feel like you have to, if you all you want to do is lurk, lurk away. I do not mind lurking. I do it myself quite often. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera a little bit. But like I said, Rick plushes are adorable. I think a Rick plush would be really cute. I'm very tempted to get one. 
because they are super cute. I'm not, like I um, was talking about yesterday on my stream, I'm not the biggest fan of hamsters. Just because I just didn't have good experiences. I really want to meet a nice hamster. That is my goal in life. If you have a nice hamster, let me know. Join my Discord, actually. Let me put that in my chat just in case you are lurking. If you do have a nice hamster, uh, you're welcome to join my Discord and share pictures of your cute hamster and let me know how adorable and how sweet your hamster is. Because I do want to meet a nice hamster. I'm not against all hamsters. I think all animals are inherently sweet. I just haven't met a nice hamster yet. And I'm looking forward to the day that I do. Because I know they exist. Um, I had a biology teacher back in the day. I had a biology teacher who had um, snakes. Uh, just native snakes to like New Mexico. So they're like a coach whip, um, a corn snake, those types of snakes. And actually they were very sweet and pleasant animals. They were interested in getting heat more than anything else, but they were actually very curious, very nice. So as in juxtapose of a hamster, I feel like hamsters can be sweet too. Cause if a reptile can be affectionate, which I've seen different forms of reptiles affectionate, um, I feel, I feel like hamster skin too. Callum Steele, hello! Hey, long time no see. How am I doing? I am I'm doing good. I am painting. I'm painting Rick. And then I have Kirby off in the distance. I started this last night, so I'm adding more layers. So, but welcome, welcome. Wait, you think all animals are nice, so what about lions or some other big cat? I do think all animals are inherently nice. But uh, if you have a lion or another big cat, you have to realize that their first priority in life is food. And if you don't respect that, uh, you will get hurt <laughs> um, because it is a wild animal. Wild animals play by different rules. Um, rules that we in know instinctually, but we just kind of forget sometimes. So I have seen people who walk among wildlife as their job so like um they are they are just basically rangers or they're park rangers or they take photographs or documentaries of wildlife and they can walk through jungles and like snowscapes with wild animals like polar bears and big cats and the the respect is there they'll leave you alone if you leave them alone and as long as you're not the easiest thing to eat out there they're like, whatever. That's why I think all animals are inherently nice. Just gotta know that wild animals' priority first is food. And if you look like easy food, it's just the way life is. So, I mean, um, and that includes herbivores too. So if you are in the way or you feel threatening to a herbivore, they will hurt you. It's not, it's something that you just have to know and respect them. Um, because the reason why I say that is that I was in the mountains in Colorado and I was just staying at a cabin and everyone else that I was staying with at the cabin at the time was gone because they had other things to do and ugh, I had nothing else to do but just stay at the cabin. So I went outside to take photographs because it had just started snowing. I love snow. If you didn't know this. I love snow. And a huge herd of bighorn uh, sheep came going through right through all these cabins and I was too far away from the cabin to leave so I just found a rock that I could just stand and just be still so I just stood on the rock and just let this huge herd of at least 30 animals bighorn sheep can hurt you they're giant and they're really big and the males have these huge sets of horns but they just knew that I wasn't there to hurt them or harm them and they just like parted ways around me and they let me take photographs of them. I respected them, they respected me and we just parted ways and we were like, cool, it's good interaction. Would I recommend that for an inexperienced person who might panic? Oh no, oh no. But that's why I think all animals are sweet because you could have 
You can have good re interactions, you just have to realize that they are wild and that they have other priorities. Respect those priorities, do them good. That sounds like my sis. Food is priority. It's exactly, exactly. You know that the food is priority and you stay away from the food. You are doing good. I mean, who doesn't get hangry, to be honest? Because <laughs> I do. I do really bad <laughs> sometimes. My husband's just like, hmm, until you're hangry. And I'm like, yes, I need food. I mean, I know that from a fact from my kitties. They, when it's food time and I'm ignoring them for any reason, oh my goodness, it's like World War Three. They're either attacking me or they're attacking each other. They're like food. Must have food, all the food. green that's okay at least now it feels feels like he has a body feels like there's shape and there's form and there's something something going on here which is good We're going to move on over to Kirby, which I am going to use some purple shadows for Kirby and all this pink. There's so much pink going here. I love the pink, but I'm like, woof, woof, it's so much. But yeah, I hope everyone's uh, Tuesdays are going good. Let me find a little corner. Oh, I have some purple already here. So I'm going to add a layer of purple, and then I'm going to go through and think about my pinks. I think they're fairly saturated, um, so that's why I'm going to start with the shadows first, and then see what I think about the rest of my pink going on here. So I'm trying not to stick my hand in watercolor, which is... Okay, I'm watercolor free. It's do I'm doing good. song is very serious. Okay, let me go to music. Ah, it's Dragon Quest, that's why it's serious. Ah, let's do this. Hey, new nude. What you doing? Scooch. My little orange kitty is so cute. He is very sleepy this morning. which I'm happy about. I don't know if the weather is changing like significantly again or what, but my cats are very unhappy this morning. 
So my boys usually fight, but this morning, um, I got after one for attacking the other, and then I turned my back, and then the other one was attacking the other one, and I was just like, oh my gosh, what's... And they were so happy when I woke up. That's why I'm just like, what happened between when we woke up and did our morning routine of good morning to it's World War III, you guys are pulling out hair. I don't know what's up with them. They're so weird. So I am currently using Daniel Smith's um, Imperial Purple, which is a beautiful color. It actually, <clears throat> I need to look up the recipe for this, but it does have a pink undertone to it, which is one of the main reasons why I'm using it to make these nice little shadows for Kirby. Since I used so much pink, I did. I thought about blue, but um, I wanted something that would accent the color and make it feel cutesy. So I was thinking about, oh my gosh, in Japan they have these stores dedicated to all these fun fandoms, Kirby included, because it's this man. Japan makes sense, but there are like all of these products that are adorable and cute, and a lot of the shading that they use for Kirby are tones of like curly colors, so like purples and stuff like that, so. Where for me, normally blues feel like a really natural like um, color to have for shading because you see a lot of blues out in nature um, in shadows and different things, just from what I observed. Um, using purples and other girly colors to accentuate the little project that you're using gives it a more fun feel. It gives it a little like cutesy, adorable, which is what I'm going for. I just want all the cutes and all the adorbs. Way. Yes, Kirby! I know! It's Kirby! I love Kirby! Um, what I'm working on today is I'm just working on shadings and washes so that way hopefully I can complete some projects that I have open. I started Rick and uh, Kirby yesterday and so I am finishing Rick and Kirby today, hopefully. Um, finishing this to the point where I can add ink later. I do, I just got in the mail some colored ink, so I think that I have a pink colored ink, so I am super stoked because I'll be able to outline everything in black, but maybe do some of the colors and like oranges and pinks. I'm very, very happy. So yeah, we're going to do, um, we're doing Kirby right now. I'm adding purple shadows because it's Kirby, it's got to be cute. And, uh... Oh, so how's your day going, Norway? I hope it's going good. Hope you recovered from your very long road trip the other day. Good, good, just finished work. Well, congratulations. It's nice to be done with work. I just started work. A full day today. I'm glad you can join me. I know this isn't my normal time to do morning streams. I usually do them on Thursday, but uh, yeah, life happens. I got, I finally, I finally got into a doctor I needed to see, so I was like, well, we'll just flip things around and call it good. <laughs> Actually, worked out pretty, pretty good.
I could get used to a morning stream every day. Trust me, Nora, I've been thinking about it. I mean, seriously, considering like doing, I'm currently doing three streams a week. Two of them are arts and one of them is video game. I'm playing through Earthbound right now. Um, normally Tuesdays are my Earthbound days, but I'm switching it this week to Thursday because it just worked out better. So, but I was thinking, I was like, man, I could really use another day of art. Let's make my schedule really intense. No, just kidding. But I'm, I'm in here anyways, so I might as well. Okay. Let's see if I can pick up a really light shade of pink. This mouth area right here, I love his smile, but it's just like, here's a tongue. And it's kind of creepy. <laughs> so I need to like give some body, like make it look like a Kirby. So we're gonna see if we can find a really light pink. Cause when Kirby does his, what is his move called? I don't know, sucking? Consuming of all things? Um, his mouth is always pink. Actually, I'm not even sure if Kirby has a tongue. I just gave him a tongue. Because to be honest, I don't know if I've ever paid attention. And for the most part, Kirby is a side scroller, so it's not like you can really see it very well. And I, I never pay attention in Smash because I'm too busy admiring that Kirby can kick butt in Smash. Because Kirby is my favorite character to play in Smash because it's it's the kindest to those who love to button smash and I love button smashing. Strategy? Nah. I am a loose cannon when it comes to playing Smash. <laughs> I'm just like... My math research is extremely good at Smash so I just make it fun for myself and I'm like how can I be the most annoying thing on the screen? And that's my job and I do it really well. So, I think Kirby has a tongue. Thank you, Norway. I didn't know. I've never paid attention. Ginger's like, he's my favorite character for that reason. Yes, he's just chaos. He's just like a little, like, he can be used strategically in Smash, but honestly, Kirby's just a little ball of chaos, and I can get used to that. That's perfectly fine. So... I can always suck up and absorb other characters' powers. It's the best and worst thing to do is to have all Kirby. Oh my gosh, yeah, because then you lose track of who's Kirby's. Just different colors. I have not played a level with all Kirby's personally, but I've watched, um, I've watched other people do it, and it is, is very hard to keep track. It's actually um, very hard to keep track of Kirby when you have similarly Kirby shaped things. So if you have like Meta Knight or anybody else who's like round in shape, you're just like, where did Kirby go? I can't find Kirby. Where did Kirby go? Yeah, if you get, um, I know that people love it and they get really excited, but the levels that move for me is so hard because I'm like, where did my character go? <laughs> Am I falling off the platform now? Am I not falling off the platform? I don't know where my dude just went. I like the stationary levels, but I know that like visually having a moving level is super cool and it is fun to watch. It's just like, whoa. Glam text. Oh my goodness. Glam. Have a purple. I have ideas for the little coins that you get and everything. I just, I'm sitting on it, I'm working on it. But I'm glad you can have glam text. You are purple and free. I think that there's, um, this month, Twitch is doing another thing to contribute to having fun in chat is, um, 
last month, I think it was the train. I don't know if the train is still going, but this month, I think until like the 14th, you can contribute so many bits. I think it's like 300 bits and then you get RPG emotes and they're adorable. I'm still waiting on my emote to be approved. That is one thing I'm going to work on as soon as I'm done here streaming is I'm going to work on seeing where I am in that process or even if I can tell. So, but I'm excited when my emote gets done. So once we get that first emote going, then we can um, work on the 15 subscribers and then we'll get our second emote, which, yes, I want to make a, a little corgi emote. Because I think it's really cute because I have a corgi for um, my bit emote, at least the first bit, which is so much fun. Because I was thinking of doing like a yamper type emote, which would be adorable. Is turning that yamper illustration I did into an emote. Nice. I'm working on a Discord game. Ooh, that's cool, Norway. You know the bots in Discord can do a lot of stuff. No, <laughs> I know I know they can do something, but I'm not a programmer by nature, but I'm always willing to learn. That is really cool. I agree. That's really cool, Norway. I'm glad you're enjoying like doing programs and stuff for for Discord. I loved the meme you put on our Discord the other day. Oh, it's hilarious. I I understood what it was trying to tell me, but in English that was so hilarious. Now I kind of wish that all of our hump beware of hump or whatever <laughs> there is a bump in the road had that exact signage because it's hilarious it's it's great speed bump ahead i think is what we traditionally say here speed bump ahead far temper i know it's really funny <laughs> yeah i'm I find it weird, but I also find it extremely fascinating how other countries do traffic laws. Because I wish that we here would adopt some of these things. Because um, I noticed a lot of different things like in Canada when we visited. And then um, I was watching a documentary about Japan and they were in Tokyo. And uh, in Tokyo, I don't know if it's all Japan, but in this documentary, the traffic lights, so the green, red, and yellow, all had countdowns. So you knew exactly how long you had before the light would change. And I'm like, that is ingenious. Because if you're approaching an intersection and you don't know how long that light has been, like you don't know if it's old or young, then you would have a countdown that would tell you exactly how much time you have. I don't think it would encourage better driving from us because I think that Americans drive scary. I haven't really driven in any other countries, so I don't know how their countries feel about it, but I think it would just be useful to have that information. So, okay. Do I want to add more color to hearts? Yes or no? I really love the purples and my flowers. I think I'm happy with Kirby just like that, because I want to add so much with pin work that I don't want the watercolor to... I have this fight with me daily. I'm talking to myself and you guys get to hear it. Um, because I don't leave my um, illustrations as just watercolor, I usually incorporate ink or line work of some sort into all my illustrations. I have a tendency to not push my watercolor to extreme realism um, because once I cover it in line work, I feel like what is more important to me, line work or watercolor? And I feel like watercolor is such a beautiful base and then the line work is just like exciting. So I think I will leave it here. 
Um, we'll move on to my coyote painting. Let me find it. So I've got a few more layers of shading to do there. And then maybe this will dry and we'll, we'll get to do line work. Sorry, Newton. He's like, you bumped my chair, Mom. Sorry. Okay. We'll set that off to the side. We'll let that dry. Here, I'll turn you so I can scratch your head. Scratch, scratch. Tico boy, Newton. He is so cute. Okay, let me flip my palette around because I think I have some shade colors over here. So what I'm working on here is that I have one color basically for shadows and I need at least one other color for shadows and maybe another color for a mid-tone. I really love the really hot, bright highlights, but I really want some more dark darks. Um, and I love this green gray that I have here. So I might either mix up a gray, which might be perfect to go with this green color. I think that's where I'm going. I'll contribute to memes and then I'll start posting some photos too in the general art channel. Yes, please. I love photography. That's what I originally went to art school for was photography. I'm a huge fan of photography. I wish I had learned more about it in college. Oh man. I would highly recommend, if you want to, is to find a place that teaches traditional black and white photography and take a class. Get a film camera, develop your own film, develop your own photographs. There is nothing in this world that's more satisfying than spending four hours in the dark room just doing little test strips, like making like traditional, like prints and everything. Oh. I um I've thought about making a dark room because I do have a basement. I totally could make a dark room, but then I'm like, oof, it's a lot of chemicals. But um so I'm just like, man, can't do everything. However, I do love it. And I love photography for that reason. Nori's like, I do prints, I shoot digital, still spend hours editing and printing. Amen to that. I've done that too. I do that with art prints too. <laughs> so, yeah. The digital world is great and I love it. Um, it just, there's something tactile about like doing it um, the traditional way and I really loved it. I don't do photography as much anymore. It's just a personal hobby for me now. Because I, this is what I do. I do art. All right, where are my brushes? Hello, friends. All right. All right, let's start with some color. I wish you guys could see Newton's face. He's just so satisfied. I bet I could. Hold on. I've got technology. I can do this. Watch me take a picture live on the internet. Okay, I'm gonna send you guys a picture through Discord. Hold on just a second. Bloop. It's just so you can see how satisfied Newton looks on his little watermelon towel. He's just the happiest little camper in the world. Speaking of art, I attempted to use Krita. I don't know how to say this. We'll just say it's like Krita, but Krita. The other night on my tablet, I got a small piece made and saved it. But when I closed it and opened it back up, the art was gone. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's so sad. Norway you got a photo gig this weekend. Congratulations. Enjoy the photo gigs. Being a professional photographer is a good way to just enjoy life. It really is. I'm talking to a MX place to do some there too. Congrats, Norway. Look at you strumming up business. Being, doing art. 
do all what you love. Uh, Ginger, um, I need to get, I need to download Krit and see what it is. I would always see if you can export. So save, if it has a save feature, save it as often as possible. And then if you could export it as a PNG file, do that. PNG files are web ready. They're usually smaller in files too. So if you're saving it on your tablet, it shouldn't, depending on how many layers you have. If you have a lot of layers and you're saving it as not a flat, but you're saving all the layers too, that could increase the file size, but PNGs are usually smaller. Um, so I would save it as a PNG and save it and then send it to somebody. Send it to your honey. Send it to your friend. Uh, send it to the Discord and send it off in the worlds where it's not safe just in the uh, program itself. Because co programs can have harp skirt moments, is what I call them, where they're just like, I'm a little special today. You were working for hours and hours, and then when you close, it will not be there when you open it back up. Photoshop nightmares. Totally been there, done that. I've worked, like, I cannot tell you how many times in college I would forget to save in Photoshop, and then I would go back to try, and then my computer would crash because I was working with a ginormous file and the computer was just like I can't I can't do it anymore and the computer would crash and then when you would pull it back up again it wouldn't be there and you're just like however I got really good about shortening the steps that I did because I was like I don't want to spend another six hours trying to redo all of my edits that I just done to this project Whew. yeah it's part of it I had one layer. That's my problem with, with like Photoshop and stuff is layering always confuse me. I will teach you the ways, my friends. Layers are your friends. They're great. I love layers. <laughs> Understandable. I cannot live without layering. Norway, you and I understand. I can't live without layering either. I have so many layers. Yeah. I think the minimum of layers that I ever have with a project is three. And that's unusual. <laughs> that's like extremely unusual. But usually like the whatever I'm working with is already done and set. All I need to do is just erase something and then enhance it. But yeah. Okay, great. What was I thinking? Three layers, line, color, and shadow, usually. Or it's, uh, that's, uh, usually with photography, it's three layers. So usually it's, um, you have your main layer, and then you have your corrections layer, so anything you need to correct or enhance. And then um, I usually do a layer of, like, saturation, just kind of, like, give a little pop. But that's when I'm working with art pieces, or, like, my simple photography pieces, so... So, what to do tomorrow night? <laughs> I'll come and get an art lesson. I'll give you a piano lesson in return. Ooh. Or you you can teach me the ukulele. I really want to see if there is a way to play uh, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher on the ukulele. Because I want to learn it. Because <laughs> I think that the beginning part of Toss a Coin to Your Witcher can be transferred into ukulele. And I want to see if someone has already transferred it. So that would be great. I usually use Lightroom, Photoshop for retouching small things. I have actually never used Lightroom. I have studied books about Lightroom, seeing if I wanted to get the product, but Photoshop is expensive, man. I can't afford Photoshop right now. One day. One day I'll be able to afford it, but not right now. I'm sure there's a ukulele version. I'm gonna go look for it now. I know, it's such a good song. I feel like it could be translated so easily. I 
promise I do work sometimes. Me too, hon. Me too. It's like, I do art. I am an artist. I do art sometimes. <laughs> I stream. I chat too. Your fingers crossed for me for this week, as I hope to hear I have an interview at the museum this week. The position closed for applications on Friday. Well, I will definitely keep happy thoughts vibing your way as much as you need them, hun. I hope you do get that interview. And a second interview, because I know that that museum usually does, like, one, they never do just one interview. I think it's up to three, so... So I know I did three when I worked at the museum. And that was for a part-time job. It wasn't for a full-time job. But I think you'd be a perfect fit for it, so I really hope you get it. photos the most? Uh, both. Um, but for me with photography, it's all about the light. If you got dramatic light or some delicious lights going on throughout the photograph, it can be of anything and I will just be like, ooh, the light there is so magnificent. I'm attracted to light and photography. Um, the shadows, uh, lights and darks, um, it really, to me, I feel like light is, that's what attracts me to photography more than anything else. I can share some art. Yes, please. Please do. Please do. Love to see some more art. It's always good. Because sharing art is, is such a, such a beautiful thing. And you never know who you'll inspire by like posting something and someone's like, I like that. I want to do something like that. I'm obsessed with clock photos. Okay. Any photos with a round object is kind of neat. Interesting. I've never thought about shapes like that, but I will definitely have to uh, take a moment and take a gander and look at some clock shapes.
<laughs> Looking for round objects with a light source. Yeah. I don't know, for me it's just like... Oh my gosh. When you can tell that a person has waited pretty much all day trying to find that one moment in the day that the light is just stunning. Like, I love... I love really early morning. Um, I like golden light hours. I love like the golden light hours of early morning and late evening, especially in places that you're in higher altitude because the light is completely different than in lower altitude. Oh, man, those are just gorgeous photos. The light that you can have in those places is just, it's just so delicious, so beautiful. It's hard to describe unless you've been in a place like that and you're like in the moment and taking a photograph when the light is just heavenly and you're just like, yes. Everything about this is just yes. Um, I had a friend in college who had loved this motorcycle. I don't think he has this motorcycle anymore because, you know, life. But he loved this motorcycle and he was like, I really want to have he's like I know I won't always have this motorcycle because life just works out that way and he's like but I want to have photographs of me and my motorcycle and um, the day that we had planned to take pictures of uh, of him and his motorcycle it decided like it wasn't supposed to rain but then it decided to rain all day it rained all day until about like six in the evening and then it stopped and then the light the clouds parted and then this big old fat gorgeous yellow gold sun came out and was like hello and everything was pretty like the world was washed and clean he had like water speckles all over his like motorcycle um oh gosh that was really pretty colors because like he didn't shave or anything like that but when i like edited the photos and gave it to him he looked it looked like something that came out of a magazine and I was like I like these photos the light was really pretty and the light did all the work I was just there with the camera and I was able to capture it it was just really cool but in my favorite two photos from when I was abroad. One is a Big Ben and the wheel in the background. That's cool. And the other one is the cover photo for the longest time. I will look them up here in just a little bit. Oh my gosh. I like, I think Big Ben would be cool to see. I have never seen Big Ben. I found two portraits that I printed. Oh, cool! I love visiting London. Bath was equally fun. Oh my gosh. Ah, you world travelers. One day. One day I will see the world.
So I, I honestly feel like going and traveling abroad is really important for anyone and everyone because I feel like it gives you perspective of where you're from and um, allows you to see the world from a different perspective, which might actually just be, it's really important. It's really important that, to know that there's all kinds of people in the world and there's so many different ways to make the right answer and there's no one right way. And it's a great way to teach compassion. We took a tour of the baths and at the end there was a spring fountain where you can drink the water, which I totally did. The tour guide thought I was weird for liking it and it tasted like well water. I mean, well water doesn't taste bad. I will totally be your personal tour guide. Sweet. I hope you like pubs because that's my dream. <laughs> London is pretty awesome. Love the pubs and underground wine cellars. Oh, cool. Yes, I... My main reason to wanting to go to uh, the United Kingdom is to go to pubs. <laughs> I am not lying. I just want to go there and sit in a pub and drink and draw. Like, and just sit and observe people just being people. Like, that's how I want to experience. Uh, yes, I want to go to a museum or two, but I really, that's how I want to experience is through a pub life. Just find, oh. That was, that was dramatic. <laughs> A7, this was preoccupied. Yeah, you gotta get down, he was here first. But yeah, that's how I wanna do it. Sorry, <laughs> Newton's like, what just happened? I was asleep and then there was a seven. We have a rule in our house. Whoever was there first gets to keep the seat. No one can boot someone else out because they want that particular seat. Sorry, seven, he was there first. Tell me if you guys go, I'll join. We'll let you know, Norway. I can take you on a haunted and oldest pub in Nottingham. Oh, yes, please. I do want to see a castle or two. Only because I love old buildings. Talk about places that have beautiful light, especially um, when most of the time the weather is gray. Castles, old buildings dilapidated structures are gorgeous because <laughs> even when it's rainy outside they still have shadows and depth and unique odd abstract shapes to them they're beautiful plus it's fun to walk someplace where you know that it's old and that other people have walked there before you and you can think about like the significance that is so Newton, did you wake up? Peace. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, you can see his little face. Hey, Newt, Newt. I'm sorry you got woken up, buddy. It's a good boy. Okay. Let me add some more darks. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm getting distracted by talking about fun places. Nightbot was like, no, I got quiet. <laughs> Thanks, Nightbot.
there an airline that you typically use to get around the area? We used Ryanair a lot. That would be a Norway question. It goes to look. Yay! Must see. Must see photos. Let's see, where am I at? I'm at an hour. I could take a break, right? Oh, look how beautiful. Oh, light. There is so much light. Norway in this photo. Oh, there's fog and there's like landscape is doing its thing, the sky is doing its thing, and then there's like this fog that's making creative shadows. And there's a round thing. I'm not sure. Is that a, that is a traffic light. I didn't even read that as a traffic light. I read it as some old timey clock. That is really cool. I really love that. It's an excellent job. Excellent composition. Excellent use of like all shades. Like you've got the whole spectrum there from light to dark. It's beautiful. <gasps> the puppy is cute. Oh my goodness. Schnauzers are adorable. That is a cute puppy. So pretty. Oh, cool. Ginger, these are lovely. I love your use of color. You are a color kid. You have a great eye for color. That's really, really pretty. That's gorgeous. Oh, these are lovely. Oh, look at all the art. These are excellent. The little kids are cute. They feel like the photography and the, the care that was taken in the black and white photos for the kids make them feel like these are like a treasured, like ancestral, like object that someone carried of like their great, great, great grandparent. But it, you can tell that it's still modern. It's beautiful. Very pretty. Oh, lovely. I love art. I love the sharing of art. There's also a guy pointing, sitting there. Oh, did I miss something? Is that in the first one? Oh my gosh, is that in the first photograph, right? Oh my goodness, there is, there's a couple people. I didn't even see the people. Oh my gosh, I got so distracted by the moodiness of this. Um, I didn't even see the people so many layers to this it's so lovely whatever camera you're using you have a great relationship with it this is gorgeous and that's what Norway does where it does this beautiful moody skies with the fog I would probably really love visiting I, I adore fog like um, Kentucky the state of Kentucky here in the U.S. has like, it's all just basically rolling hills and horses. So if you love horses um, and they have the most beautiful fog, it comes in super thick in the mornings and the things that just pop up and appear, um, like especially early morning when you've got the sun behind the fog. So the fog's turning that pearly ghostly white and then horses just like appear and they move through that fog. It's beautiful. Just love it. Love the light. I'm a light kid. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're quite wonderful, I agree, Ginger. Very well done. Oh, you feel welcome to contribute. I, I love art in all forms. Because usually art comes from the heart. It's very rarely do I meet someone who makes art and they don't put their heart into it. And usually when you lose lose that connection, it just becomes like a job or you just, you do it because you're good at it and you don't feel it anymore. You can tell, it's very easy to tell. Uh, 
That's why I admire like people like Bob Ross. I know he's really popular, but I also admire him because he loved making those paintings, but he always made it very clear that these were the paintings that made him money. But despite that, he found ways to make it fun for himself. And I admire an artist who's like, I understand that this technique is good and people want this in their homes. It may not be what I would particularly want to paint, but I still love it. I still have happy trees and happy moments. I'm like, that's the kind of artist that I admire, you know, who no matter what they're doing, their heart is into it and they love it, so. I got your art on the wall, cat. It's awesome. <gasps> Yay. It makes me happy. Just happy that I found a good home. A lot of my art literally sits in my studio and never goes anywhere. I'm just always happy when someone's like, I want that. And I'm like, please give it a home. And it's exciting to me to think that my art is roaming wilds out in the world and it's it makes someone else happy as happy as it made me so that's that's all i want i don't want to be famous i don't want any of that stuff i just want to make a couple people happy and if that's all i do in my life is maybe inspire a couple people and make them happy i'm i'm happy i'm good it's all i want to do Good boy. Okay. All right. So I think I'm happy with the shadows. I ended up making my green into my green blue into my mid tones and ended up taking Pain's Gray and Ultramarine Blue, um, French Ultramarine Blue, and made that into my shadows, which is great. So now you've got. Let me scooch that down so you can actually see what I was doing because I realized it was up and in the nether space. Um, I still am really enjoying how hot white these are. Um, it, I think once I start putting line work on top of it and having these really hot whites, having it just there is really going to make that line work go, hi, I'm line work and I'm a lot of it because that's what I do. So I think at this point, um, I think that I need to move on to all these flowers right here so but I don't have my paint ready so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a really quick break see if I can find my paint um, get it ready to go and then I'll come right back for that so I'm gonna take a break so be sure to grab dinner lunch snacks make sure you hydrate hydration is very important when it's winter around here so, and then I will just take us on a very quick break so we can move to those flowers really quick. Oh, let me find it. It is over here. Here we go. Yes, and Ginger, please do all the commercials. Have fun with the commercials. I guess we rarely get to use them. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some gouache. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back. Let me switch this back over. Might be a little bit of paint mixing, but I'm gonna use gouache. I learned how to paint on gouache. Gouache was the first paint medium that I've ever used. I know it's been a lot of years. <laughs> so um, I know from studying a lot of artists who love gouache and they use it a lot, and I have been highly interested um, that this gouache by Holbein is amazing. Um, this is the most recommended gouache um, product that you can get. It's uh, there is I cannot tell you how many artists that I follow who use almost exclusively gouache, and this Holbein is what they use. They will not use anything else. Um, so I do have a couple colors that I have gotten through my sketch box, which is like a little art subscription that I have that just sends me wonderful supplies I get to play with all the time. So I don't have Holbein for everything. Um, I think the other one is Savio Fier. I, I don't, I've never heard of them, <laughs> but they have white. So, and then I think the other one that I have is, well, I'm not gonna even try it, but this is the other color that I have as well. Um, so gouache is amazing. It's really beautiful. Um, it has an acrylic base, so it acts, if you could find a happy medium between watercolor and acrylic, gouache is, has beautiful pigmentation to the paint. Um, the colors are super saturated and gorgeous. It layers just like acrylic, but it can act, its washes can act a lot like watercolor. Um, so, I've been really highly interested in returning back to gouache, so you guys are going to get to hang out with me as I just play and make some flowers down here, and we'll see if I like it enough to be like, okay, gonna make an order now. So, uh, I think the reason why I've hesitated before now is because um, I, I did not have a good teacher. <laughs> This is, this is where you gotta be careful. If you teach art, be sure to teach art kindly. Um, let me move this over. Bloop. There's a little little bit of paint there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit down. It doesn't take much. I don't even have a container for this yet. Um, let me move you a little further away. As you can tell, the colors are super bright. I may not use all these colors, but we'll see. Be nice to have, ooh. Oh my gosh. So this one, I don't think you can see it very well. Um, this one, I think, I waited too long to use it. So I store all of my tubes, my tubes of paint in Ziploc baggies, just to hopefully not have them have too much terrible humidity or change of temperature too much, but even so, sometimes when you order tubes of paint, they will, let's see if I can get this to focus. It looks a little bit, um, it's hard to tell, but there's actually like this yellow greeny all the way around this particular color, which means that the binding medium to the pigment has separated, which means no matter what I do to try to mix this color together, it won't do it, so there's no point. So. I won't use this color. In fact, this giant tube of um, gouache paint is not use. It's useless to me. I'm gonna have to throw it away. And I hate doing that. I hate wasting paint like that. But if the binding medium separates from the pigment, there's no way you can get them to mix back together. At least not when they're in the tube form, from what my experience is. Um, and it it actually affects. Um, that binding medium will start affecting all of your other paint because it's not mixed in well. So we'll set that off to the side. I did get it from a box. I think it's been a couple months since I got it, but sometimes that happens, even with my Daniel Smith. I'll get Daniel Smith tubes and the binding medium has separated and I'm just like, because oh. I have done the whole like, well, maybe if I squirt out like enough, you know, like I just keep pushing it through. Maybe it's just the top. Now it goes all the way through. Oh my gosh, Holbein though is super bright. That is a happy color. Look how happy that color is. It's very smooth, whereas this Savior Fier, when I put it out the tube, it's slightly chalky, which is pretty common. Um, it's like a student grade, it feels like. And this Holbein, which 
I think this is their student grade. I don't know if it would tell me. I'd have to look it up which one is their student grade. But this feels a lot different. This this paint's beautiful. I can tell that it's this is more artist grade than student grade. But you can make beautiful artwork with student grade watercolors, gouache, acrylics. Um, it's just a matter of the quality of pigments and how much saturation you have. So. paper too. That's okay. I realized I made my, my space a little too. Well done. Crinkly noises. Put all my water, all my gouaches back in my bag. We'll just set that off to the side. So right now I'm doing a very light wash because I want to set up a color underneath. And then um, once that color dries and sets, we will add more color on top. So just like watercolor, um, gouache can dry about two shades lighter, so it goes on pretty strong and then it fades out. So for right now, it's not going to be super exciting, I'm just going to put my base layer of white down first, and then from there I will make different shades of white to add layers on top to kind of give it that um, I'll end up being able to use some dry brush techniques, which I'm excited. Oops, that's too much. Exciting thing about gouache is because it is acrylic in nature, um, I'll be able to add layers, so I'll be able to add whites and um, have some more pastel luminosity to um, the work, which is not easily done with watercolor. You do have white watercolor, um, but it doesn't stand out on its own once you have like a base undertone to it. And um, the way that I imagine this, these um, 
these flowers being is that the underbelly of the wash, so my underpainting, is still going to show through, but I want it to feel more like an oil painting than a watercolor painting. Whereas a watercolor painting, you wouldn't use this particular set of techniques um, to make flowers, but I miss having an underpainting, like an oil painting, and then having that luminosity of color show all the way through. And that's something that I feel like I can do with gouache on top of watercolor. So part of it is just going to be playing and the other part of it is just going to be lots of layers so we can uh, crinkle crinkle. I know, I'm so sorry about the crinkling guys. It's super, especially if you have headphones on, it's super loud. So it looks like I'm not doing anything but there's actually, I'm adding a layer of white and that's going to be my base coat. No, it wasn't bad at all. Oh, good. I definitely have been um, lurking on streams and had my headphones on and they'll like do something or crunch on something. Like they'll crunch on extremely crunchy food and um, that coming in through headphones, I'm just like, oof, it's, it's loud, it's crinkly. So I know that you can hear my brush strokes. I know you can hear my water. And sometimes you can hear my breathing, so I'm like trying to be conscious of like the noise coming in through your headphones. So that way it's a pleasant experience and that's not terrible. The other thing about gouache is if you use gouache and you use brushes for the purpose of gouache, um, because it's an acrylic medium, uh, you your brush will forever be for gouache. It will never do anything else um, because of the binding mediums for acrylic is different than in watercolor and it stays in your brush. There's not a whole lot you can do about brushing, like washing it out. It doesn't wash out. so. Um, be sure to designate them or mark them. I think when I'm done here, I'll end up putting like tape at the top of my brush so that way I can remember these are only for uh, these are only for gouache. It's the same thing for um, you don't want to use your uh, acrylic brushes for your oil painting. They don't the chemicals used in the different mediums are so different. You really just want to have a set for each type of medium that you have. If you're not sure, like if you're trying a new medium and you're not like sure if you'll like the medium and you don't want to spend a lot of money on quality brushes, I would highly recommend just there, at least here in the US, I don't know about overseas, there's a brand called Royal and they make sets of brushes that you can find at any craft and hobby store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby 
and they're relatively inexpensive and you get a bunch of different sizes. And to be honest, if you're on a budget, those brushes aren't bad. Um, and um, having nice equipment helps you paint, but is not necessary to paint. So you can spend a lot of good money on some beautiful brushes. However, it's not necessary to make beautiful art. Um, I've seen people who use basic materials like ballpoint pens and make gorgeous art. And it's just a ballpoint pen. Same one that you'll use to make your notes while you're sitting in a meeting. Like, it's all about just knowing how to use the materials you have around you. And if you do get really good at using a, a brush, um, you know, that is not the most expensive, when you do move up to an expensive brush, you will have so much knowledge and you'll understand how to use the tool um, more effectively because of that. Same thing with watercolors or gouaches. I mean, I took a watercolor painting class and I sat next to a girl and I felt kind of bad because I feel feel like the teacher didn't really like support her enough but all she could afford was just Crayola watercolors and she made beautiful watercolor paintings and I feel like because she didn't buy what the teacher wanted her to buy for watercolors she kind of got shunned and she just stopped showing up at class even though I was trying to encourage her to keep staying and keep learning because to me like it doesn't matter like what you use um, as long as you're learning and you're learning how to use that particular medium and Crayola watercolors yeah you can make really pretty things like there is certain things that you can do with Crayola watercolors that I feel like are really hard to do with really nice watercolor paint. So, I mean, we all start somewhere, right? And you might as well have fun with whatever materials you can afford at the time. So. It looks like I'm doing nothing, but I keep telling myself, there is something there. I just need a base layer. Well, hopefully it didn't flicker. It might have flickered a little bit.
Thanks, Ginger. I appreciate it. I got into super focus mode because I was like, where are these leaves? So it's the crazy thing of having an underpainting and then having a mid-tone and then having like this nice finished part right up here and I'm like, okay, where do those flowers go? They're up here, around here somewhere. The layers that I'm doing are very transparent and um, very hard to see. However, when I go back on later with another layer of paint, once this paint dries, and I go back with another layer, it's Kirby. Just realized we're listening to Kirby. Sorry, brain fart. Um, it'll be easier to see it because I won't be. I won't be fighting what is underneath. Um, I will be painting on top of a nice, beautiful, light, titanium white layer. Um, titanium white is beautiful, it's in the blue family. However, um, I mean, I'm using the supplies that I have because I might as well, They're, they've been sitting there for a couple months. Um, I would probably want to use, oh my gosh. I have forgotten what it's called because I usually get titanium white because it's so it blends so beautifully into other colors. Um, but I would probably need a warmer color. However, if you ever need a warmer white, you can always go into a yellow and add very little bit and I'll help warm it up because titanium white is in the blue family. It's gonna be cool and it's gonna recede. It's not gonna be like, hello, I am here, which makes it a really nice uh, blending color. So whenever someone's like, oh man, I'm going to start painting in acrylic or oil, like do you have colors that you recommend? And I always recommend a Alizarin Crimson, uh, Titanium White, Yellow Ochre, uh, Raw Sienna, and then make sure that you pick out a blue. And that's pretty much it. So the blue can be ultramarine, it can be phthalo. I would recommend for newbies, ultramarine blue, because it's a, in the purple family, it's not as strong. But basically, um, as long as you've got a lizard and crimson, um, a yellow of some sort. So both yellow ochre and raw sienna are in the yellow family. You can get a like lemon yellow if you'd like. Um, but if you're going for more naturalistic colors, uh, raw sienna and yellow ochre are they're right on. Alizarin crimson is beautiful. It is a powerful red, but it's usually transparent, so it blends really nicely. And then uh, titanium white is excellent. I hesitate to give black to a newbies because it's so easy to use. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with black, but it is really easy to use and to get carried away with. So I usually recommend to refrain from black until you learn your basics and learn how to make shadows um, that aren't black based. So. Their foundation at least isn't in the black family. But Mars black is warm and it's lovely. Um, I'd actually recommend Payne's Gray instead of Black. Payne's Gray is lovely. It's uh, a blue-gray, so it's in the blue family, but it's a neutral blue. So, um, but it also creates beautiful shadows. So. But to each their own. Some people don't even use those colors, like, at all, and they use all pastels. And you can do that. And it's exciting.
So it's hard to tell, but you're starting to see that from when we started from now, you can see that now we have like this nice neutral gray almost. It's taken the greens of the background and has made into a gray with the titanium white um, because you have the white pigments and the blue pigments in there. So now all of our flowers look gray, which is, we're doing good. We're making progress. Because then when we add white on top of this, we will end up having a, uh, that white will not be as great. That sounded real great. That was good English. Good English, cat. <laughs> Um, it will take on a more white translucent quality rather than blending with the color underneath it. The color, this gray color, will still be there, but it won't be like, hey, I am really here. It will just be a, a soft note in the background. Kind of like, um, best way I can describe it, is food. I guess I'm getting hungry or something. Uh, when you add jalapenos, for example, you add a jalapeno and you add a couple, uh, oh my goodness, I just got a ring. Everyone from Sarah Lizzie with a party of four. Oh my goodness, look at all those happy, colorful emotes. Sarah is right in your fridge. Speaking of food. Welcome, welcome to the chat. My name is Kat, I do art, and today I'm doing undertones of gouache on my watercolor painting. So as you can see, I've got a little coyote skull hanging out here. I was doing Kirby earlier, but now I'm, I'm doing coyotes. So thank you, Sarah and Lizzie, for hanging out with us and enjoying the chat. So what I was talking about was that gouache on top of watercolor is making this nice gray color and that this soft notes when I add more color on top of it should just be a nice melody underneath. It's not going to be super, uh, super bright. Uh, so right now it feels very bright and it's like, oh, that's a lot of gray, but it won't be once we add another layer. Oh, well, thank you so much for Darthfish21. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it very much. It helps me out a lot. So it's like when you're cooking chicken and you throw a jalapeno in there and you're baking it in the oven. When you're done baking, there's not, a jalapeno is not there to be really like, hey, I'm jalapeno. It'll add a nice afternote into your chicken, which is really good. I highly recommend adding lime and jalapeno to baked chicken. It's delicious. And that's like an afternote. So while you're eating the chicken, enjoying it, it's great. But then there's afternotes too of like, I use lime and jalapeno. And those are such nice bright colors. This gray will be a nice base that will show up, but it won't be like, I'm the star. So yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah Lizzie. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for the follow. Welcome everyone. I love the emotes. These emotes are beautiful. Look how happy they are. And I love that you can raid my fridge anytime. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's, that is so cute. Oh my goodness. I, Sarah, did you make these emotes? Cause they are beautiful. I love these emotes so, so much. Thank you. But yeah, thank you. Welcome everyone to, to the chat. Hey Seven, do you want to say hello? I have a kitty cat. Actually I have three. Seven, you want to come here? Me meow. You want to come here? You want to say hello to everyone? Come here Seven. Come here. You want to come here? Oh. Coming? I gotcha. Oh, that's a good boy. Here, I'll give you a hug. I uh, know it's been a while. This is my oldest. This is Seven. He says hello and thank you for the raid. He loves to climb on my art table and uh, be the show. So I draw realistic sevens all the time. There you go, Sessa. He is a good boy, though. Yeah. Seven's like, hey. Hey, it's almost time. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up these flowers and then we're going to have a wonderful rest of our day. But I'm so happy I got a read. Thanks, guys. The sweetest. I appreciate the follow. But yes, if you haven't tried it, definitely do garlic salts 
lime and jalapeno with chicken. You won't regret it. If you like hot things, it's really good. <laughs> I did make them and thank you. They are fantastic. Those emotes are beautiful. Just in to lurk while I stretch. I understand stretch away. It is important to stretch and exercise. <laughs> Seven is, he is huffing down there. I think Seven's gonna make it another appearance. He's a little perturbed because his brother is in his chair right here next to me and he's like, I want in the chair. Hey buddy, do you want to sit behind me? Here, hold on. Sit, sit back. You want to sit behind me? Yeah. I'm almost done, buddy. He's like, it's almost lunchtime. Did you know it's almost lunchtime? I'm obviously talking about food, so... Hey, buddy. No, 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 not on my desk. Da da, you. All right. Just want to make sure I finish these flowers before we go. Man, Manu? Oog Manu? Thank you for the follow. Sorry I butchered your name, but it's lovely and I appreciate the follow. Seven says thank you too. Okay, he laid down. Good. <laughs> it was like, I'm gonna get on your desk. Uh, I streamed last night uh, and uh, Seven had a moment where he was like, I must be loved. I, I need the kitty love. And it was a mad scramble because I had just made a huge pile of pink of watercolor. And so it was wet. It was wet paint. And here comes this kitty cat who was just like, I'm walking all over your surfaces. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it makes me laugh because when Seven gets very determined, there's no stopping him. And he is a senior kitty, so I just... I just love him through it because he is who he is and we've been together for a long time so he he deserves to be loved and uh, he just cracks me up though so if you ever see me doing a mad dash trying to get all of my painting supplies away from my cat it's because he's gonna hang out he gets very single-minded about things The cat has surrendered for now, but how long will it last? Exactly. <laughs> You'll never know. And the surprising thing is, is like, it never ceases to surprise me. Because <laughs> I think he's done it several times now. And every single time I'm like, surely he won't. Surely I've given him a hug. Everything is good. He's good. We're happy. We're doing great. Yep. Don't. He especially loves it when I do streams and I build like Legos because um, he loves being in the center. Like basically I will have a cat laying on my desk while I build Legos and he is just content. But I have two other kitties. I have Ada, who's my youngest. Ada is a little black kitty super sweet super quiet little ninja kitty and then i have newton who's currently way asleep i have pictures of them on my discord the cats are babies that last a lifetime it's so true it's so true if you do want to see kitties or join my discord you're welcome to do so so let me put the link in the chat so if you like what you're seeing here and want to hang out and talk about food or talk about pets or more art stuff you're welcome to join us there you can see i took a picture of newton just crashed in the chair earlier and he is just happy as a clam there's also some amazing art by some of my fellow moo meows 
um, by Ginger and my, I call him Norway. Norway, I don't know if he's here still, but he was said he would be right back. The Discord, I know, Discord. So if you want to continue the fun, join us on Discord. He left. He surrendered. I get my chair back. So normally I do a variety of art here. So if you're new here, hello, triangle. Hi. It's been a long time. Welcome, welcome back, my friend. It's good to see you in chat. Hello. Hope you're doing well. I don't know if you're streaming again, but please let me know if you are. Because I know that you're a streamer as well. You're extremely talented on the video games. Apex Legends is, I think, the passion for you. Okay. All right. So before I leave, let me show you guys... I do so many different things. One of the things that I do is I do skulls and flowers. Thank you, Ginger, for cheering a bit. I appreciate it. Um, I also do, I'm a big nerd. <laughs> I'm a nerd geek, whatever you want to call it. I also do fun little illustrations like Kirby. That's what I was working on earlier today was Kirby and Rick because I'm thinking I want to play a Kirby game really soon. I've been working on Pokemon Shield for the past couple of months. I'm almost done, so I'm like, I think I want to do Kirby. So I'm gonna, that's what I was working on yesterday. Um, so, and then this is a project I've been working on since last month. I love skulls and flowers. If you like skulls and flowers, you, you're in good company. Also, if you like dad jokes, you're even in better companies. I love puns and dad jokes. I think, did I get all the flowers? It's kind of hard to tell with the underpainting. I think. So, I think I just missed one, like, right here. Do you post your art anywhere? What a wonderful question! Are fish? Yes. Here, let me... If you want to follow me on social media, you can just find Cnor Art, which is the title of my channel. I go by Cat, but my um, company name and my channel name is Cnor Art. So you can follow me on all those fun places. I am posting more on Instagram. Facebook and I have a, a relationship of some sorts. <laughs> um, and if you want random thoughts, Twitter is where you go. If you want schedule updates, uh, Discord and Twitter are the perfect place to do that. Yes, and I do have a command in chat for dad jokes. So if you want to say dad jokes or you have your own, you're welcome to put them there. Just, oh my goodness, thank you for the host. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're the sweetest, that's the best. So I appreciate the host. Um, mm. I always want to say your name wrong, triangle, rectangle, there we go. Sorry about all the questions. No, don't ever say sorry. I'm happy to have new people in chat. Please ask away. If she's focused, I know. Ginger will help. Ginger's one of my mods, so say hello and give her all the love, guys. Mods are amazing and they're extremely helpful. Oh yeah, 
I had a flower. I was like, where was that flower? I know where my flower was again. There we go. Hello, Norway. Welcome back. This is quite a welcoming stream. Good. That's what that's what I want. <laughs> that's that's always what I want. I want you to feel welcome. Everyone is welcomed here. I'm gonna change the music really quick while I finish this last little flower. Bloop. Maybe yeah, we'll do Pokemon. We try our best. We I have a really, I have some amazing chatters. I have amazing community. Um, our joke is, we say moo meow a lot, because I love cows and I love cats, so the moo meow joke has just flourished and now it's its own thing, so. Yeah. We're quite a diverse crowd and uh, we're very happy, which is all I have ever wanted, so. Dad jokes! Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, the command should be just dad joke. I did accidentally did the same earlier. Yeah. I need to make a little, like, cheat sheet about all the different commands we have, so... <laughs> oh, this is perfect. Okay, what do you call a group of disorganized cats? A catastrophe. My life. Constantly. <laughs> it's perfect. A dad joke. So my New Year's resolution is to stop leaving things so late. Yeah. Yeah, that won't ever happen. I always show up late. I am I am that friend. You can always you can always guarantee that I will be late. <laughs> if I'm early to something, it's just a rare thing. I'm always late to everything. That last little little bit of the flower. Okay, so we've got we've got a nice. We finished. This is exciting. So we finished the skull. The coyote skull is now finished. Um, I'm loving it. I love skulls. Uh, this is exciting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on his on the body. So the neck of the coyote is going to be all flowers. Um, it's going to be daisies because daisies are my favorite flower. So um, this is a personal piece that I'm making just for myself because I want to do it and it's a great way for me to kind of like process life. This is art therapy for me. So skulls are really important to me because I feel that when you're just your bones, you can't hide anything. You are who you are. And I feel like that's how I want to go through life It's just be who I am. When you meet me, you meet me. I'm not a one person here and another person there. I am who I am. Uh, daisies are my personal favorite flowers. I love flowers with happy faces um, and flowers remind me of change. So there's everything is constantly in change. Different flowers for different seasons of life, different flowers throughout um, for different occasions as well. Um, I feel like the language of flowers are really strong. So um, I'm going to put daisies on here too to kind of add to that metaphor of you know, like, I am who I am. This is, you know, a reflection of that. Um, I'm calling out for that originality and hopefully someone out there will enjoy it as much as I'm making it as well. So I enjoy it. Dad jokes and puns are my life. We will be friends. This is good. <laughs> Uh, yes, those are all right, yes. Why do ducks make great detectives? They always quack the case. Yes, yes they do. I believe those are all the commands. Oh, and the boa command, yes. We have a, some of the founders of my chat are named boas. We have lady boa and wooden boa, and they have their own command because they've been around for a long time and they crack us up, so. All right, so let me show off Kirby one more time. 
and we'll do my ending announcements and I will let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. For those of you who hung out with us um, for the raid, thank you so much. I don't know if um, Sarah Lizzie is still in chat, but I just want to give a big huge shout out to the raid and thank you so much. For everyone who liked and followed, thank you guys. You're wonderful and amazing and welcome to the Moon Meows. Welcome to chat. Um, today we worked on some of my open projects, which was my coyote skull and Kirby and his friend Rick, which is so cute. I love him. This little hamster is adorable. Uh, so I plan on adding ink to this. I also plan on adding ink to this as well. So we're just going to continue working on this, these couple of projects over the next couple of days. If you want to, if you haven't already, uh, please feel free to join us on Discord. We have all kinds of fun little little spots of chitty chatting. We have general, we have food, memes, uh, places for dad jokes. Please feel free to join us. If you're an artist yourself or like to make art of any kind, so that can include music or maybe you love to write, maybe you love like doing like physical activities like crafts, like crocheting or knitting, please feel free to share your projects. I always love seeing more art. And I feel like us artists should hang out together and support each other. I also have social media, which you can follow me at Cnor Art as well. And then, oh, in case you didn't know, I also have merch. So if you would like to check that out as well, let me find, let me put that in chat really quick. If you like what you see here and would like to purchase something similar to it, you can check out my Redbubble store, which has some really cool, uh, really awesome things. All kinds of things from coffee mugs to posters. Yeah. And the next time I'm streaming will be on Thursday. It will be in the evening. It'll be at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. I will be playing Earthbound because I do video games here too, and I will be joined with my best friend, Mathersist, and we're gonna fight zombies. Cause I've never played this game before and I'm in an area that I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And I've been hinted that there will be zombies. So if you want to see some zombie killing, join us on Thursday night. There'll be some good times. So yeah. All right, let's find those little bit of end credits to give a few more shout outs and that way we can start putting the moon meows in chat if you want to put moon meows in chat to say goodbye just put exclamation point moo m-o-o -O, and you can start putting moon meows in chat that's how we say goodbye all right let me find a few more this is how i say goodbye we're gonna put all the moon meows in chat and we're gonna say a special thank you to the mods today because they rock as always <laughs> Fight zombies and make voices. Yes, I am not a voice actor, but if you want to giggle over hilarious voice acting, please join us on Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I promise that there will be dad jokes, there will be puns, and there will be lots of laughter. But until then, have a wonderful rest of your week, and if I don't see you for the rest of the week, I'll see you soon, and know that I think you're awesome. Alright, bye guys, moomyow!